Hey, everybody, what up? All right, so looking at Kiro here, the editor, and uh, first things first is, like, this thing looks just like everything else. Um, Windsurf, Cursor, and now Kiro are all VS Code forks. Um, so when I look at this, I'm like, man, this looks exactly like VS Code except for the color scheme. A couple of colors are changed, but, like, this is almost a one-for-one for, one for uh, Visual Studio Code. And if I compare it to Cursor, it does feel a little bit less unique. Um, one of the things that jumps out at me, and, I, and I'm just getting started with using this thing, is like it has this vibe coding concept. And I can't stand that, honestly. That's, uh, that's kind of a dumb term. Um, it's a dumb way of coding. I understand like it works for some people. Um, I've tried vibe coding now for like a year and a half. I'm just trying to get up to date with the way that that everybody's coding these days which is vibe coding um but that said it creates a mess it creates a mess every time and it doesn't matter if you're using cloud opus um the best tools out there will go off the rails and they will create a mess if you create anything of complexity and when i say something of complexity like for instance trying to create something like kiro go ahead and clone the visual studio code um, or fork it and do the same thing that they did and start adding a bunch of features. And that's when you're going to find out that these tools will, will fail quite a bit. Uh, so that said, though, um, they have the pricing model here, which I hate. I mean, there's zero, 050 vibe requests. So they're calling it vibe requests. It's so annoying. Um, they do have this concept of spec versus vibe. I understand that. So like spec is like you're just simply writing out what you want to do and maybe coming up with some some diagrams. I think this thing will connect to Figma. Let's try it out really, really quick. So, yeah, a big thing that jumps out at me right off the bat, I have an open project, brand new, nothing in it. And I look at these different models, and it's got Claude Sun at 4 and 3.7. So it's extremely lacking there uh, for the autopilot mode. I mean, there's no Gemini. There's no local models that you can add or bring your own key um, right off the bat, that's going to be a major problem for these people in adoption. All right, so I'll click this spec. I'm just going to go ahead and paste in what I think this thing would want. It doesn't have a ton of documentation here as far as I can tell. Uh, so I'll paste in a spec. And from what I understand, one of the benefits of this is like uh, creating like Jira tickets. And um, the promise is like you get a bug ticket and it's going to just do everything for you. And I know that there's some examples of that happening uh, where – you can like Microsoft apparently has a ticket system where you can create uh, they have their AI bots that are using Claude and everybody else that do, um, you know, agentic autonomous coding and they can read the ticket and they can go into the code base and they can find the bug. And sometimes they can change the code and do a PR. That is where we're headed ultimately, eventually. Um, but again, I think that that's for the examples that I've seen anyway, it's 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 all very simple type examples and even if the bug is an obscure bug that would take a human a long time that's probably the biggest benefit of this type of a system if there's an obscure bug the ai is going to do a better job of that than the human uh, where the ai definitely falls flat is forgetting the context of what it's actually working on which seems to be the biggest problem with all of these llms whether it's uh in, in art or video or just simply complicated code bases it doesn't have a large enough context to understand what you're doing and it'll forget. And then ultimately, it'll also have a bunch of code workarounds because it doesn't factor in what the overall goal of the project is. Or in many cases, sometimes what is proper code and what's not. And if you really want to see an LLM fall flat, start getting it to write code that actually is writing AI code. So getting AI to write AI code is where you definitely see uh, things fall, fall apart pretty quickly. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to create this spec here. So as you can see, it's using Cloud Sun F4, so it doesn't even give me the different options um, or as far as like anything other than that. I don't have Cloud Opus available, and that's been a big source of contention with, with Windsurf not being able to have the latest access to all the Cloud mo models because they're partnered with um, with OpenAI, basically. And now I guess Cognition, the Devon, the Devon people ended up buying it. All right, so I created this requirements doc. Here I can see it. This is, uh, again, nothing special because really this is Claude doing this. So Claude and uh, ChatGPT and Gemini, they all do this pretty well. 
creating these markdown files of what they're trying to do. And I think in many cases they actually do this because, again, they lose context of what the actual end goal is. So writing a bunch of readmes and comments helps the AI sort of stay on track. All right, so now it has this new button. Move on to the design phase. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, um, another readme. All right, whatever. Um, let's refine it. I guess you could refine it. Let's uh, make this better. Accept edits. Like, uh, what did you edit, dude? All right, so code div, code lens, that might be problematic here. All right, well, again, that, that's uh, that's bad if, if it doesn't have code lens to tell you what it's editing. It looks like it's still editing the file, but I don't see, like, additions. There should be something to, to tell me what it is that you're adding to this existing doc. Again, what a confusing mess that would be if you had... You had uh, 500 pages of documentation, and this thing's just injecting new shit in here without knowing what is going in and where. All right, let's ship it. We're vibe coding. Yay. Um, all right, so moving on to the next phase. Like, look at this, like, you got this 01 complexity. Oh, my God. Like, the, none of this stuff is necessary. This is uh, this is all smoke and mirrors, man. All right, let's move on to the final task. This is a lot of shit for writing a to-do app because uh, ChatGPT or Claude or whatever, they could just, like, spit it all out and write it, like, or uh, any one of these CLI tools, Cloud Code or Ada or anything. Um, perfect. The spec is now complete. Okay. All right. Now code it. All right, so I'm going to pause it while it's doing all this. All right, so apparently it, it spun out all this stuff. It's got models, repository, to-do service. Um, okay, now run the app. I can't run the app yet. Yeah, this is this is stupid, dude. Why would I want to go through all this to create a to-do list? So look at like the design here. Dude, nobody's going to read all this. Not for a simple to-do list. Can you imagine anything of complexity? All right, now it wants to do an NPM install, and you can trust command and accept or accept command. What I guess trust command means that it will put a setting most likely in your in this Kiro somewhere maybe or here. No, so it's not even clear where it's going to store that setting. So it's basically asking for permission to run that command all the time. Okay, waiting on my input. Run full command, dude. All 
Uh, it's kind of annoying. It's asking me for every single command. It should just, I mean, terminal commands, I can understand though. Like uh, typically these tools will have an allow list versus a uh, deny list to me. Very careful that you don't like format your whole hard drive or something or install crazy viruses through the command line because giving any sort of AI access to your command line is definitely playing with fire. All right. So did it run the app? No, it's got an error. It says I need to fix the import. Run the app. So basically, this thing created a worthless little command line. What? All right, so all that does is spit out that shit. Wow. See, the fact of the matter is, is that I guess people that are not familiar with how this stuff works would actually think that this is relatively impressive, that it's like writing up requirements and all that. But like we have this capability anyway, like, um, you know, for me, I typically go to like ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever product. And usually I'm switching off and I will get those to write up readmes or to review documentation and things like that. And I usually do it as I need uh, need it. So like this isn't anything any different. This tool is just simply calling API requests to the LLM and the LLM that you can communicate with on your own is just simply writing this out. Yeah, and then I guess to end this off, I just open up another project and I'm like, what is this code doing? And I press enter, it just doesn't do jack shit. Anyway, not a great first impression in my opinion. I think this tool is not like cloud code or cursor, cursor is too expensive. We're going to need an open source alternative to this. I know that like something like Ader is trying to fulfill that need, uh, but it is just simply a CLI. I do think that we need a full cursor-like graphical user interface that has more features than cursor provides currently, is maintained open source so you can constantly keep up with the uh, ever-changing LLM AI landscape that is occurring right now. And then uh, you also need to bring your own key. And I know that some people don't like bringing your own key, but you know, simply put, you gotta pay for the resources that you use. And all these companies are gonna promise to give free resources. Um, the tool just needs to capitalize on that. You know, if anybody wants to give you free resources for a period of time, uh, but you know, the orchestration of the tool itself needs to provide as many free resources as possible. But ultimately developers are gonna have to pay for the usage that they're using but you want the tool to be smart as hell in regards to making sure things are proxying the right chat LLMs for the right reasons so that you're not wasting tokens and dollars. Um, and then ultimately we need the local LLMs to get a lot better. Uh, so local LLMs get a lot better, maybe get a, um, you know, your own server that's hosting your own LLM like Quinn Coder or something like that, 32 billion parameter model. And, um, and if we can keep the price down low on things like that, if they're just good enough, uh, the vibe coding thing can stay alive. But right now, th this tool, I have absolutely no need for this right now based on what I've seen so far. So I'm sure it'll get better. Uh, but the fact that it just integrates with Claude, there's no local option for my own LLMs or anything, uh, this just isn't going anywhere right now. All right, everybody. Th thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you check out my game, King Crab Steam VR. Uh, it's actually pretty impressive. It's going to be out around November. And thank you for watching. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.